Hello, my name is Scott Parker, and welcome to week 21 of the Year of an Indie Writer. Now, I suspect this one will be a little bit shorter than others. Uh, this is Memorial Weekend here in America, which uh, includes Memorial Day, the uh, unofficial kickoff to summer. And as us writers who, like, who have to plan things out, I think I've written here before how I very much love writing in the summer. Why? For the main reason that there is a definite beginning and a definite end. There is Memorial Day in May, there is Labor Day in September, and the time in between is just a great way to have a plan, stick with the plan, and get something accomplished. And this year, we actually have extra days. So we have a very early Memorial Day this year. Can you believe Memorial Day is actually already here? So it is on Monday, which oh, I forgot the day, 20, 25th of May. And we have an actually a late uh, Labor Day. So we actually have 104 days between Memorial Day and Labor Day. 104 days which amounts to 15 weeks. I don't know about you, but just if just do the math in, in itself. Let's say you have 104 days. Let's say you write a thousand words a day. At the by Labor Day, if you start on Memorial Day, you will have uh, written 104,000 new words of fiction. Can you imagine that? Isn't that a pretty cool idea? And, of course, with this year being 104 days, it's slightly less than 100, the uh, historical precedent of the first 100 days of President Roosevelt's first term back in 1933, that's now everybody talks about a, a president's first 100 days. What will he uh, get done in that time? But for writing projects, uh, I would like to challenge you if you haven't come up with a writing project, or more than one, it doesn't have to be just one, find one, find one that this weekend that you haven't finished, that you haven't, if you have this idea that you've been percolating in your mind, let the summer of 2020 be the time that you crack open that project, open up a new Word file, or Google Docs, or Scrivener, or whatever app you use. Start writing and planning that project in the summer of 2020. You know, even on a regular year, there's lots of extra time to write because the pace is always slower than usual and the, 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 uh, the dress is more casual. So anyway, I just would like to, like to remind everybody that uh, Monday is Memorial, Day, uh, is Memorial Day, sorry. And it's a, it's a good time to start a writing project or finish one, but but make the summer a nice a nice working summer because you know writing is supposed to be fun. I have a few things in mind that I plan to finish and then also start. I prefer to. I'm not quite sure what they are yet, so I don't want to uh, say something and then like actually have it come out wrong. But anyway, that's the thing. So summer writing officially starts on Monday actually Tuesday because I take Monday off but I know we writers are not supposed to take any days off Stephen King takes no days off I believe but hey that's why you're, why he is where he is and I'm not so whatever what else has been going on this week uh, not a lot really uh, there was an interesting interesting uh, blog post from Dean Wesley Smith about bookstores he, he has a bit of a I'm not sure if it's a dour outlook or maybe uh, a realistic outlook, which is actually a bad outlook. But I, I don't see I don't see a lot of change in some bookstores. I know that. Let me take for example our Houston bookstores here in town, the independent ones like Blue Willow out in West Houston, and of course our famous Murder by the Book out near the Museum District. They have been doing very well. I mean, in terms of communicating and making available their services, whether they be puzzles or curbside pickup or online orders. They've been doing really well. And I know that when 
it's time to have all of the work from home time lifted or the you can shop in stores like that lifted I know people will come back to those places mainly because they are micro communities as nice as Barnes Noble is as nice as borders used to be they're big and they're often impersonal so I think when you have a small independent bookstore here in town or elsewhere across the country or across the world I honestly think that independent bookstores will be fine after this COVID-19 crisis is over even if that means 50% capacity and you have to wear a mask I do think that independent bookstores will be fine I know other people don't share that opinion I would very much like to hear your opinion of that do you anticipate bookstores changing the way they do their business I don't I'm looking forward to returning to local bookshops and just you know mingling with other patrons and hearing their stories about what they were doing during COVID so independent bookstores um, Barnes & Noble I honestly don't keep up with all the news I just hear it from blog posts that I read throughout the week I mean there are some people that say Barnes & Noble is going to sink um, it seemed like that's a pretty big bookstore chain for it to sink I, I, I'm not quite sure if that's going to sink or not but I guess only time will tell I mean Pier 1 um, is this what going to go bankrupt this year this, uh, this year uh, after this cr crisis allows people to come back inside and you know shop like normal or pseudo normal no I shouldn't say pseudo normal because it's, it, it is a new normal um, we just have to wear masks for for the certain number of weeks and months in the future and you know it's not that big of an imposition but you know that's just me so independent bookstores I think will survive summer writing um, get ready for summer writing and summer reading that's my last topic for today as I have written elsewhere through on this blog and else and, and uh, on my own blog I love the books that I want to read during summertime it's if big action blockbusters superhero science fiction movies are the tent poles that prop up the summer movie season then big action-packed thrillers mysteries are the kinds of books I want to read I'm probably gonna crack open a an Indiana Jones book I've got the entire run I have only read the very first one and I read it like what two decades ago so I'd like to to recapture some of that indie magic this summer I'm not quite sure what book I'm gonna read yet but uh, they got about a dozen or so so I'm gonna read some of that but I have a few on my um, I went to half price books this last last week and it was uh, such a pleasure to return to a bookstore and browse I mean like what I, what I was just saying so I picked up the first James Rollin book Sandstorm which I believe is the first of the new series it's it's a big book but I've heard a lot of good things about it and I figured why not start with book one see if I like it and then I also picked up a novel by Brad Meltzer called the book of lies I have read some of uh, Meltzer's latter work and some of his comics and I've read some of his historical stuff but I've not read any of his standalone thrillers so I'm looking forward to, to get jumping into that and probably a few other things as we go along I'll keep everybody up to date as this as this year goes on pardon for the water break but that's that's kind of about it for me th this week uh, my son's my son officially his last day of school his seniors last day of school was a week and a half ago but the school closed down uh, sorry the school year closed down uh, yesterday and uh, yeah I have a high school senior that has graduated gonna walk next month but that's pretty darn exciting but so not a lot of not a lot of things here at the Parker house so I hope you are staying well staying healthy staying sane and staying focused on the things that you can control and one of them is your writing and starting Monday it is a great time to start a project and take it all the way through Labor Day 104 days later so have a good weekend talk to you next week goodbye